said goodbyes were very spoken and time surprised right. at anything that's going to happen. Right. But rather you should be ready. Amen. And you should hide this word away within your heart so that no man can come and take Amen. it from you. But if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to begin at verse 28. That's a very well not 28. But I'm going to begin at verse 23. It's a very uh, common part of Scripture. I'm sure a lot of you know it. But I think it is worthy of being read and being taught time and time again so that we stay steadfast and know who our God is. But starting with verse 23... It says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. Then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Amen. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man yep. is this? Amen. That even the winds and the sea would obey him. You see, they had done seen many miracles performed by Jesus. Yep. They had seen him do numerous things. But when everything started going crazy, when the storms came, 
they feared. Yep. And they had him right there in the ship. You and I have Jesus in our ship today. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need not to fear anything yep. that's going on in this world. Right. But we need to realize that we have him on our side. And he's going to protect us. Yep. He's going to be with us through it all. No. See, these disciples, they weren't first-time fishermen. Wasn't the first time they'd ever been out on the sea. I imagine many of them were very, very skilled in operating that ship and probably had been in many storms before. No. But when that one came, they got scared. Suddenly they didn't know who to trust. No. And that was their first mistake. They should have known who was in that ship. Amen. I feel like a lot of people throughout our land today, they are scared. They have such a fear upon them because they don't realize who's in their ship. No. And he's been there all along, but right. they know him not. And a lot of it is they weren't rooted in good sound doctrine. Right. They weren't rooted in the truth of who he is. Jeremy sends me your guys' sermons and things all the time, and I tell him, I say, it's so good to hear good sound doctrine being preached. Man. Because it's very rare today. A lot of churches treat Jesus as if he's not even real. Yep. They treat him as if he's nothing but a fairy tale. He's nothing but a uh, something they've got used to doing. Yeah. Yeah. And that Jesus is everything. Amen. Yep. And he can't be put into a box. A lot of them put him in a box. He can't do this. He can't do that. He's not going to reach down and save us. You know? And they'll say, I believe he's real, but there's certain things in his word I don't believe because man wrote it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And if you don't believe the word, you don't believe in him. That's right. Because... My Bible tells me He is the Word. Amen. He was flesh and dwelt among us, and they knew Him not. Yep. He stood for what was right. He preached love. He preached forgiveness. And they crucified Him. Yep. Lord. And the world's doing the same thing to the church today. The ones, the few that are standing up for what is right and what is true, or being mocked. Yep. But let me tell you, we have a reward if we will stay steadfast in that. If we will be long-suffering. I mean, I know we're all flesh. There's times you just want to grab people by the neck. And yep. <laughs> that is the flesh rising up in yep. us. We need to speak to them truth. And be stern in it, but we need to speak it out of blood Amen. with all long suffering. Because I can assure you that if you were anything like me, if I hadn't had good Christian men and women who was long suffering with me, I would have never come to Christ. Yeah. We have all strayed many times. We have all denied Him at times in our life. Yeah. But we must stay after those to get saved and to come in to share with them the love that Christ has shown us. Amen. Yeah. Yep. But the most important thing today is that we just stay rooted and grounded in truth knowing who our Savior is and knowing that He's in our ship. Amen. A lot of the world as we're seeing right now they put their trust in man. Yep. They think a man can save them right now. And that's why a lot of them scared is because, no. don't be mad at me, but a lot of them, it seems to me as if they feel as if they've lost their Savior. Yeah, that's the truth, brother. 
Let me tell you, there is no flesh man that is yep. your Savior. Right. Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. My book tells me that in the last days, they'll say Christ is here, Christ yep. is over there, and he said, follow him not. Yep. Those are false prophets. Those are antichrists. Don't follow after, after their deceiving words. Amen. They're good deceivers. They speak many good things. And there's many people who people that follow these people who are very good people. Yep. They stand for the right things and the things of God. Yep. But just as the word said, they would be deceived. Good yep. people are deceived. Right. Right. That doesn't mean they lack in more right, more uh, morality. That means they lack in the word. Yep. Exactly. That means they haven't read what's going to happen. Had they read it and had they studied it, they would have known it was coming. Yep. You know? I see many people posting on Facebook now, we need to pray for our country, pray for our country. Yeah. Something's wrong if you just started praying for yeah. our country yesterday. <laughs> Amen. You should have been praying for our country yeah. for years. Amen. Now. Because this has been a road we've been on for quite a while. You're right. Uh, the presidential election hasn't stopped the decline right. of this country. Yeah the morality of this country. It's on a down path. Yep. It's going to continue that way. How do I know that? Because it's what the Word says. says. Yep. The Word don't say well, everything's going to get good. Right. We're going to put a man in office that's going to make it all okay. Right. right. And the world's going to look to him and he's going to be great. The Word tells me there's going to be a man come. That's going to be a deceiver. Yep. It's going to speak great things. And he'd deceive the very elect if it were possible. Yep. The word tells me that the uh, days of the elect would be shortened. Yep. God loves you. Yep. But God is trying his best to get his word out to a people that don't even want to listen now. Right. They've made up their own laws in their heart. Right. The laws of God no longer pertain to them, they don't think. There is no fear of God. They do not fear a judgment of God because they put it away thinking it ain't nothing but a big fairy tale. Yep. They'll stand behind pulpits and they'll preach it, but they won't live it. Yep. We need to stay steadfast in the Word. Amen. We need to stay grounded. Do not look for any man to save you. Right. If any man professes that he is going to, he is a liar. Yep. And this Word says they will believe a lie and be damned. Yep. That don't have to be you. Right. That don't have to be any Christian. Right. But they have given themselves into fables, into lies, into doctrines that said you can live any way you want. Yep. And the doctrines that said, uh, well, you can live for God on Sunday, live for the devil Monday through Saturday, and you're going to be all right. Those are false doctrines. True, man. There's doctrines that say that uh, God does not hate homosexuality. That is a lie from Amen. the very pits of hell. Amen. God hates anything that is contrary to God. Yep. Does God hate the sinner? No. Me and you are sinners. Yep. And we come to Christ. And He was He saved us. He was long-suffering with us, and we must be with other Christians and other members of our community who we know are lost. But we should stay very stern in what we tell them. Right. Amen. Because now is not a time to play around with God. Amen. If we think, well, they didn't go to church today, you know, but I hope he gets right one of these days. And, 
you need to let them know that one of these days probably ain't going to come. That's right. We're getting into the last minutes. Yep. We're in the end of the very end. We've been in the last day since Jesus is here. But now we're in the last days of the last days. Yep. And God is going to, He's going to come, and He's going to come for a bride who has made herself ready. Right. How do you make yourself ready? You stay in His Word. Amen. You stay on your knees. You pray. Pray without ceasing. Yep. Everywhere you go, you need to have a prayer upon your heart. Amen. Because that second that you don't, that's the second Satan reaches in with the law. Yep. He takes every opportunity he can get. He's very good at what he does. Yep. He's done it for many, many years. And he's very deceiving as we see him deceiving people today who are good people. Yep. People we thought were so grounded in the truth, but yet they gave their self unto fables. Yep. And it's sad. We need to pray for God's mercy. Pray for God's mercy upon this world, upon our nation. Pray that God will give us a little more time. Amen. So that maybe we can reach out and save someone. Yep. And I mean, people have become so hard-hearted now, I know it's very hard. It's hard to get people to come in right now. I've never seen a time when people... We're believing such lies. No. And we're going after false prophets and false Christ. And they believe it's true. And they've set their heart on that and they've made it so hard that Christ is knocking at the door and they won't even open it up right. anymore. They've shut him out. But there's going to come a day when he's going to shut a door that no man opens. Right. So we really need to be praying for His mercy upon the world and upon our nation. Amen, brother. Amen. I know I'm not a very long-winded preacher, Amen. That's, but I come to you in love and speak to you what God would have Amen. to speak to you. And if you ain't here in your life, I would that you would just give your heart over to Him. Come to Jesus with an open mind. He'll reward you for it and he'll change your life for it. Man. God bless you. Amen. Everything that needs to be said is said right there. Every every problem, the answer to our country is individuals. That's me and you. Get in that book right there. God doesn't favor one man over another man. He won't. He said, seek me early. And what? You might find me if I like you. <laughs> if you're a Democrat or Republican or where you, he said, seek me early and you what? Shall find me young young ladies, young men, old folks. Are we willing to seek him? Are we too interested in social media? Kids, I'm not picking on you. I ain't got to adults yet. Are we too interested in checking the news? Seeing how the lawsuit's going, seeing what's happening, worrying about the... Forget all that. Lay it all aside. We had an old fellow that used to come to church in heaven now, Mr. Paul Selby. And he started coming to church when he was 74 years old. And uh, watched him grow. I always heard people say old people can't grow in the Lord. I, don't, I never believed that. Never believed that. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that doesn't apply to Christianity because I've seen God work in the hearts of older people. You can change. You can, you can change and become a great Christian. And, and I'm not talking about great Christian. I'm not talking about getting your picture on the wall and being, have a poster. I'm talking about walking with God and, and knowing God. And Mr. Selby called me up one day. He said, Preacher, he said, I'm sitting here. He said, I used to get up in the morning and grab my newspaper first thing. He said, now, he said, I got my Bible set between me and the newspaper. He said, I don't touch the newspaper until I read my Bible. The only thing better than that is just not even touching the newspaper, period. <laughs> uh, 
I could say something else in case, unless you run out of Charmin or something. But get get in get get your Bible. I was 16, 17 years old. I've told this at camp before over there in that house in that back room. I got my little brown Bible and I started reading it. Really, you know what? God started speaking to my heart and I'd read stuff in there and I would think, man, if that really was what it's saying, then somebody would have already preached it because I've heard hundreds of sermons and the devil was putting that thought in my mind. But God was showing me truth in his word that I had never heard anybody preach before. And God was speaking to my heart. And, and that's what it's all about. God will communicate. He'll speak to you. I knew a preacher once, Randy Taylor, said every time he'd get a new Bible, another Bible, same Bible, King James Bible, when he'd get one, he said he'd write in the front of the Bible, Dear Randy, over Genesis 1.1, and then to close the Bible, he'd write, Love God. Because he <laughs> took it as a personal letter from God to him. Amen. And uh, I imagine... All y'all at one time or another got a love letter. You know, you read them, smell them, look at them. Try to wonder what does that mean? What's that mean? Well, that's what it is. It's a personal relationship with the Lord and taking time for Him. We ought to just find a spot here this morning and pray. And this ought to be a time of renewal for God's people, not a time of giving up. You know, and, and, and the brother said it a minute ago, I see professing Christian people we're going to take to the woods and we're going to form our posse. What in the world are they talking about? I don't even know what they're talking about. Have they lost their mind? The Great Commission is the same. The command to come unto me is the same. We just need to draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to us. Amen. We're the salt of the earth. And uh, you won't even know who your enemies are unless you read that Bible. You might think you know who your enemy is and that might be your friend and you might think you know who your friends are and that might be your enemy. The Bible will reveal the difference to you. Let's find a spot here in this beautiful, beautiful, what a beautiful afternoon. Find somewhere here, just take a minute, whether it's in your seat or here you can use the altar. Let's just pray a minute, talk to the Lord. Take that message. Jesus is in the ship. Are we going to let him... Are we going to let him calm the troubled waters of our soul? Or are we just going to let him sleep and try to figure out how to do it ourselves? Well, we, better, we better go wake him up and ask him to help us because he will help us. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And so the great mighty things which thou knowest not. The only reason the Lord won't help you is if you don't ask him. My dad used to say he's a gentleman. He won't force himself on you. You have to ask Him. Let's find somewhere here and let's pray and just ask the Lord for His help. Amen. If you don't know Him as your Savior, get to somebody. Get to us. Let me know. We'll talk. Hey, we'll show you how to be saved. But if you've got a problem, if you've got a worry, a concern, something, once you just hear it this afternoon, bring it to Jesus and trust Him to answer and to help you. Whatever it is, let's just bring it to Jesus.
song, and I'm not going to sing it, but what's the song, Jesus, What a Friend of Sinners? What is that song? I wanted to read it to you. It just come to my heart here. Let's see if I can find it. Friend of sinners. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was looking for it's something. What a friend of sinners. No, Jesus, friend of sinners. Anyway, I'll we'll find it. Figure it out. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. We ready to eat? Y'all ready? To eat? Thank you again, brother. We uh, we had never we never met, but you're my brother, and it's a blessing to have you preach for us. I enjoyed that. I hope everybody here and listen enjoyed that as much as I did, because that's uh, that's what I needed to hear. It's a blessing for me this morning to hear that. Amen. And uh, let's let's go ahead and pray. Matt, you want to pray and ask the Lord a blessing on the food and the rest of the day. You don't have to get out. Well, you got to get out to eat anyway. You can't get out anyway. No, is the food already here or do we need to bring There's it still over? more stuff to bring over. You need fellas to help you or the girls to help you. You don't have very many girls. They're all, we got some, somebody will help. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. God, we thank you for the congregation here today. Thank you for the message that you gave us. Thank you for the preacher that you sent to us to, to give it to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for our help. Our state of mind, God, give us give us courage. Help us do your will. Yes. Not to worry about whatever whatever's going on around in the world. So we thank you for the food. Thank you for all your love and blessings. Amen. Amen. Um, just in case. Any-